Hello, thank you so much for being here. We are Nerds of the West and today we are teaching you how to play Fight the Blight from Ghostfire Gaming. We do have to say before we jump into all of this that we are sponsored by Ghostfire Gaming today. So thank you very much to them. We are going to be teaching you how to play, then playing through the game, and then reviewing it all at the end. We do that all live on twitch.tv slash Nerds of the West and you can come and join us in the future on a Saturday afternoon Australian time. It's probably Friday night for you American folks mm -hmm. and really early Friday or Saturday morning for European. We stream at a weird time. I yeah. mm. time zones do not exist to me other than the one that I am currently. Do, in. do you know what does exist? What Th this game? Hey! And you probably need to know how to play it. No, so, Lachlan. Teach me, Lachlan. This is a Lachlan. Uh, I'm Tom. You, you got, got a Chris. Buddy. Hi. And a Reese. Hello. The Lachlan is the important one. How do we play Fight the Blight? Hey, how you doing? We are all just a bunch of friends yeah. that are not people. zombies. Million dollars. Good to know you. Million dollars. Um, million so this dollars. is a million take dollars. that sort of um, card game where we're going to be playing cards on top of each other, turning our friends into zombies, <gasps> and you win by being the last human alive. Mm. So how does that work? Well, fortunate for you, if you get turned into a zombie, you're not out yet. So what? Good to know. You can still be part of the fun. Zombies are people too. <laughs> <laughs> on your turn, you can do Three, act, three different actions, uh, and you have to take three actions in a turn. You can take multiple of the same action. So you could play a card, which you play a card from your hand, um, and you can play the, do that three times. Uh, you can draw a card from the top of the deck, so you could draw three times if you wanted to, or you could replenish a card, which if you had a card in front of you that had uh, a purple card in front of you, for example. Um, you tap it. You tap it, and you can use the replenish ability to untap it. And those are the three different uh, actions you can take in your turn. So you can play a card, draw a card, and replenish a card. Certain cards also have special abilities on them, which will get uh, played out as you go, so they don't count as your turn actions, if that makes sense. There are a couple of different colored types of cards. So you've got red cards, which are played on other players, uh, and they will negatively affect them. A lot of the red cards will have this skull symbol down the bottom here. And you'll turn into a zombie once you have X number of skulls determined by the number of players. So we're playing a four player game, and so once you reach six skulls, you turn into a zombie. So if I was to have uh, this nibble in front of my player, and I had six other cards that had the skull in them, then I would turn into a zombie, I would flip my card, and now it is my job to try and revive myself to become back a human if I wish to win the game. What other cards we got? The other cards Great. that we have are purple cards. Purple cards are defense cards, and they sit in front of you, and they'll sit in your play area. You can have three defense cards, and you can't have duplicates, so you can't have two isolation cards in front of you, and if you had your maximum of three cards, you can replace the cards in front of you. So say you wanted to play a fourth card down, you pick one of the three, and you discard that card, and it takes its place. So you can still have your three cards in front of you. The other type of card there are is equipment, which is these blue cards, which are sort of like a once-use item. So when you play a blue card down, they'll normally say, do this particular um, action or do this particular thing, and then the card will be discarded. And they're sort of like a one-time use, which are really handy for replenishing your health or other benefits of helping other players. The last type of card is blight cards, which will be drawn from the top of the deck. They have a special skull on them, so we can see when they're coming up. So while one of the actions is draw a card, you might not want to draw a card if the next card is going to be a blight. Mm. If you draw a blight from the top of the deck, you flip it over immediately, do what it says, immediately draw and play a death card. So there's another deck next to the main deck, which is the death deck, uh, and that is going to go next to you. And this is going to be like a permanent effect that's going to um, hinder you for the rest of the game. They're normally negative effects, um, such as this, one here, which is vulnerable, which is permanent skulls. So you're yeah. at a disadvantage when you draw a black card. <laughs> right, so even if you revive, that's going to be impacting you. And that's the thing, right. yes. Got it, got it. So, Made. once someone turns into a zombie, uh, because we've played a couple of cards and everyone's dishing out um, some hate here and there and we're playing cards in front of each other, um, once you turn into a zombie, you're not out of the game yet. You keep your, your uh, skull cards in front of you, and it is your job to infect other players to make them zombies, or you want to kill the person who has the chalice. So, 
The first time that someone becomes a zombie, uh, we count up all the skulls on the table and whoever has the fewest skulls in front of them gets the golden chalice. So, if I was a zombie, Reese has the chalice, I want to kill Reese or turn him into a zombie so that I can get the chalice and revive myself and become a human again. No, <laughs> no, I'm good. <laughs> when you get revived, you yep. discard all red cards that are in front of you. Gone. But you do keep death cards, which means you might still have some skulls to quickly turn you back into a zombie. Yes. Ugh. Also, when you uh, turn someone into a zombie, they'll flip their card onto the zombie side and they'll flip their festering card, which everyone has their own special festering card. Um, so this one, for example, which Tom has, uh, whenever an opponent zombified you, every player but them must reveal their hand. So there's special abilities that will happen uh, okay. to the other players. So is there anything else that I think we need uh, to cover? Only the one note that if you do get turned back into a human and you somehow have six skulls worth or the limit of skulls worth in death deck cards, mm -hmm. then you get to discard those. Mm -hmm. If you yeah. do manage to get the golden chalice and you have that many death deck cards, congratulations, you've just pulled yeah. off something incredible. So clear if you got away. so infested that <laughs> not even unlife can save you, you at least get to start fresh. Exactly. Okay, got it, got it. And the, the winner... The last He's human. The last the last human. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So I, it's a I take think you that may have game. said that, I just wanted to. Let's get clear. It's take that game where you're not out of the game just because you're dead. If you want to see it played, we're going to do a playthrough of it. It's going to be up on YouTube in a couple of days' time. Until then, thank you so much for watching. We're Nerds of the West. Like and subscribe down below, and we shall catch you next time.